I want to know your thoughts on Spotify and Neil Young pulling his music off it. Because, you know, we're on a podcast platform, so it's a little meta. Johnny Mitchell, too. First of all, I love Neil Young and I love Neil Young's music. But the idea that it was worth $4 billion in value to Spotify caught me off guard. <laughs> That's that's all I'm gonna say. I right, listen. I'm a I'm a cinnamon girl fan as much as the next guy. Buffalo Springfield, sure. I'll sing that while watching old Vietnam documentaries. But <laughs> when he pulled his music off of Spotify and Spotify went down, I was like, hmm, that doesn't seem right. I mean, it's value, but I, I, it, 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 that caught me off guard. It's a real bummer when, you know, in order to make your activist ploy for Spotify to stop spreading disinformation, that like you, you actually need to call Taylor Swift. But she has spread disinformation as well. She oh. is, she's out there saying that Jake Gyllenhaal is not a stand up individual. <laughs> and I will say this I don't even think he has the scarf. I'll be fucking honest with you. He, I don't think he's worth he the scarf. He doesn't have. That could be any scarf. No, that's the scarf. Also, okay, okay. Did you see the photo shoot he did with the, with the scarf? Recently, yes. With the scarf on and her little red glasses, he did a magazine spread. What else can he do? Taunting what else can he do? The song. What else? John, he I think could do John, nothing. This is the first time I'm going to say this, but mm, listen, mm, I mm. have fought like the online legions for you, but mm. I do not fuck around with Swifties. So you are on your own. Absolutely. Boss. Swifties will find where you live. You know, everybody talks about woke cancel culture and the online mobs. You haven't stepped in shit until you've stepped to One Direction or BTS or Taylor Swift. I don't care if you're a political activist on the right or the left. You have no idea. <laughs> I've, I've, gotten less, I've gotten less blowback from Israel-Palestine than I did for like a One Direction joke. But let me, let me go back to your, your, your original point, Chelsea, which is how do you feel and, and this is going to be a blanket statement. Okay. And I would say this. Don't leave. Don't abandon. Don't censor. Engage. I'm not saying it's, it's always going to work out fruitfully, but I'm always of the mindset that engagement, and especially with someone like a Joe Rogan, who is not, in my mind, an ideologue in any way. And I think the, the proof of that was... I don't know if you remember, there was a guy uh, who went on his podcast named Josh uh, Zeps, who, who had, they were talking about, I think Joe said, myocarditis, kids shouldn't get the vaccine because it causes a, a higher risk of myocarditis. And Josh said, well, actually getting COVID is a higher risk of myocarditis for kids, so they should get vaccinated. He said, no, it's not. He said, no, I think it is. He goes, mm, no, I'm pretty sure it's, it's the other way. And they looked it up. And when they looked it up, it came out that it's a much greater risk if you get COVID and you're, you know, eight to 12 or six to 15 or whatever the age range was, it's a much greater risk of myocarditis catching COVID than it is getting the vaccine. And if you are an ideologue or if you are a dishonest person, that is the moment. Like Tucker Carlson in that situation never would have looked it up and would have given that look he gives like somebody's giving him a confusion enema. Like they're just <laughs> like like they're just firing confusion up his ass. <laughs> and Joe just went like, oh, I didn't know. Oh, okay, I didn't get that. A and that to me says, oh, that's a person that you can engage with. And so mm -hmm. I, I think all the overblown rhetoric about him, and here's the other thing. Like, you're a musician, like how much misinformation is spread by, like Eric Clapton is on the platforms that you're on and he's a fucking psycho. <laughs> so do you remove yourself from every platform? By the way, do we only do these conversations so that I will get in trouble? Yes, that thing that's yeah, all we do now is we go, John, who what do you, you want to piss off today? Neil Young fans, you know Taylor what? Swift fans, I, I, or Eric I Clapton fans? I, I love them all, but my point is, we all exist in this world and on this planet. And there's no question that there is egregious uh, misinformation that's purposeful and hateful and all those other things. And, and that being moderated is a credit to the platforms that run them. But this overreaction to Rogan, I think is a mistake. 
I really do. Mm. And, and Do you think it gives him power to react in this way versus if you actually wanted to say something no. against his- Joe Rogan has power because so many people listen to him. But that And pow- because of the elk meat. Yeah, let, let, let me go back because you're right, Jay. Jay Rogan has power because of elk meat. <laughs> and that is what allows him to have the energy to have all the, but he has four hour conversations and they are expansive. And he may say some things that you think is misinformation and he may platform people that you think are wrong, but to single that out as something so egregious as to have to be, I, I just don't, I think there are dishonest bad actors in the world. And and identifying those is so much more important to me. Uh, and I also think sometimes those grand gestures of I'm removing myself doesn't necessarily take into account, like you're on Comcast, right? Comcast or Time Warner. So if you're on any cable station, right? They've got Fox News on. You telling me Fox News isn't a willful purveyor of misinformation, dishonest, to its core. So now everybody on yeah. TV has to pull out of their fucking shows or deplatform because on the sa- in the same tube that you exist, they exist. I've been in his position on a much smaller scale where people suddenly look to you as by you doing it, you are putting, by you platforming someone, that's the big word they use, you're platforming someone and you don't push back hard enough, or you don't do it to the manner that they would do it. Once you go down that road of, if you have a lot of listeners and you say something that's either incorrect or or possibly harmful, we are in competition for ideas and minds. And unless you can come up with, it's sort of like, we used to talk about this with the war on terror, right? We went, I always thought one of the biggest reasons why the war on terror was such a fucked idea was the general strategy of it was 19 people who were extremists took action and bombed the the World Trade Center and did this terrible thing and killed 3,000 people. And so we were going to go bomb the shit out of that country until until 19 people wouldn't want to do that anymore. (laughs) Meanwhile, it was hatched in like a basement in Hamburg. And it was, the world is interconnected through ideas. Like, unless you have a bomb that can kill ideas, you're just chasing, it's, it's a doomed strategy. Like, make better arguments. I'm not saying that it'll work, but you can't cloister yourself to what's out there. You have to know. You have to. Yeah, that's a, it, that's a good point. And I, to a niche point within that, I'll say is that, and this is something that I, I struggle a lot with, with my internet content, is that when you are one of the people with a platform speaking and you travel in the waters of empathy, wanting to do better, wanting to do the right thing, and you mess up, uh, people react way differently than if Joe Rogan traveling in the waters of like, let's, you know, uh, maybe vaccines are bad for you. Don't take them. Like he could mess up and will never face consequences in the way that if you're known for uh, trying to do the right thing, you will face intense consequences. Like the scale is off. Chelsea, if I go on Twitter, there's not, I don't have to go on there more than 30 seconds before I can find somebody letting me know what they will never forgive me for. The, one of the biggest questions I always used to get asked was, why I do, don't understand that. Why Can do you I have O'Reilly on your show? And I go, well, I have people in my family that are to the right of him and I still talk to them. So why not talk to him? And, and I feel like you have to engage. Like, how do you not engage with mm. people? Like the whole point of engagement is hopefully clarification. Now you may not get it. It may be a fool's errand, but I will never give up on engagement. And by the way, yeah, I'm more worried about the algorithm of misinformation than the purveyor of misinformation. Misinformation Absolutely. will always be out there, but if the algorithm drives people further and further down the rabbit hole, the fucking algorithm 
is the amplifier and the catalyst of extremism. And if you can, I, I would much rather fuck with the algorithm than deplatform and all these other things. And Maria talked about that. Maria Ressa. Maria yeah. talked about that in the Freedom episode, yeah. how an algorithm can push you further into whatever ideas were kind of expressed within your first search history and how you can continue to go in either direction. And that to me is like, that's scientific. And that's like also like innumerable because it just kind of throws stuff at you faster than you can blink. Nobody stops to take a breath and think about what's being said. Nobody stops that. You're not there to take a breath. You're there it's all a bullfight. Where's my red cape? Also, Twitter is uh, not for nuance and Twitter is not for context. Both of those things can't exist there. If you tweet with nuance and context, you will barely but exist the there. It's, it's not- The aggregators are there to distill things to their greatest potential energy. And their greatest potential energy is what's the most inflammatory? Yeah. Do you get my point? Like they're, they're all yes, making this absolutely. idea of like, we've got to remove this from Spotify. And you're like- no, you've you, you've got to engage on Spotify and you've got to figure out a way to neuter the algorithms. You that's where the that's where the true pain is. And I will say it, when you're talking about you got to engage, that's where it is. This is where I need you to go on Twitter. When someone says I will never forgive John Stewart for this, you write back, you say, "Please. Please forgive me. <laughs> Please forgive me. What can I do?" <laughs> I need you writing back to every I individual. I do not need my boss to become a reply guy. I don't need that to happen <laughs> because then before you know it, John's like, "What? Did you know your feet are out in this pic? I don't need I don't need him to be there." What I need I, What if I only reply on grammatical errors? <laughs> what would that, what would that be? <laughs> I, I think oh, you meant T H E I R, not um, T H E Y God. apostrophe R E. Here's the thing that you you always have to remember: you cannot outsmart the crowd. You cannot outsmart the mob. So you can't be circumspect. You can't be. Th you have to try and express yourself as clearly and as purely as you can, and fucking come what may, and and. Because there is no way to formulate an opinion in this world that will not bring you from some corner you didn't see some form of scorn and retribution and contempt and, uh, and criticism. And you just have to try and sift through and see like, is there anything constructive in that? And if not, fucking move on. Yeah, like I could say mm. I hate bananas and people would say, oh, so Jay is homophobic. Wow. That, can I say something? Yeah. I, I didn't realize that when we hired you. Oh, and no. Now, so here's the thing. I oh, am God. pulling my music. <laughs> can I tell you something? I've always, like, just imagine being so good at music that you want something and you're like, you will do this or I will pull my music. <laughs> Like uh, that's yeah. such a fucking like, I would love to have created something that so moves people that I could actually, as a lever of power and force, say to them, you will do this or I will remove my music from John, your you also mind. have to have I, a catalog. I will remove my melody. You have my, to have a catalog my melody for that will to go. work. That's you right. You can't have two albums. You can't even have four albums. You have to have- Oh, you gotta have a catalog. And, yeah. Yeah. And again, it didn't or, work, which is what upsets or me. Or <laughs> just the song Driver's License. Oh, yeah. You don't need yes, a catalog yes. for that. That song has such emotive power that removing that, I believe also could be. Another group of stands online that will attack you mercilessly. You could even true? say, I like Olivia Rodrigo. I think she will grow up to be an amazing star. And they'll be like, she's already a fucking star, Jay. <laughs> How fucking dare you? Did you write driver's license? Uh, also, I just want to say that one's not hi hypothetical. I watched this happen to Jay online. You know, it's like when you do a show and like there's five people that hate you. And you, you can always, like, you watch a show, you kill. You always look and you'd be like, there's people there that are like, I don't buy this and I really wish we had gone to see something else. 
but I don't have to ride home with them and hear them talk about it. <laughs> and that's, that's what you have now uh, with Twitter. But I don't want to, I think it's so much more powerful to engage. And there's something about, I'm going to take my ball and go home that I don't like. And especially with someone as much as I respect Neil Young, because the dude's got balls and he's an interesting guy. And not only does he have great music, but he's got just like a fascinating mind. And, and I think, uh, and, and I'm sorry to hear that, that that's how this, this will play out. Actually, the actual strategy Neil Young should have done, I just realized yeah. it. He should have put out a, a soundbite or a headline where it says, Joe Rogan says J-Lo can't actually sue. <laughs> and then he will get all of J-Lo's fans to cancel him immediately. And that is the only strategy we have going forward. <laughs> no. 